kiülök ide, ahol van, de izé, az orvosok szoktak ülni. Thank you. 
Well, good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you're watching from. Welcome to this Olympic qualifier. It's the qualifier for Group G, held, of course, here with that iconic backdrop of the Longines Tops International Arena. The team starting order that we have for you is Australia, led by the chef to keep Todd Hind, then New Zealand, followed by China and then Japan. And this is the order of go. So we'll have one rider per team following each other. So all of the first riders then all of the second riders. And as you can see, it's quite the star studded lineup. We've got the likes of Edwina Tops Alexander with that star horse of hers, very much on form with fellow Castlefield. So have Olympic riders such as Mike Kawaii to come as well. And some fantastic names for New Zealand on the starting list as well. We have to keep for New Zealand is Oliver Edgecombe. For China, it is Jia Depeng. And for Japan, it is Yoshihiko Nakano. This competition is being held over in the Sand Arena. Uh, just if you know the layout of the Longines Tops International Arena, it's on the near side of that big structure in the middle of the venue known as the spider fantastic facilities at this venue of course home to Jan Tops and Edwina Tops Alexander fantastic facilities absolutely unbelievable VIP area there and fantastic facilities with permanent stabling for the horses plenty of areas for the warm-up and training and great facilities for riders as well, right in the heart of Europe, in the Netherlands. Easy access for many of the top riders who are often based in this area now. So just the four teams to come. I'll take you through the course design when we have our first rider in the ring. That first rider will be Hilary Scott with Oaks Milky Way. Quite a few pretty established horses here on the list. Uh, the youngest that we have is 11, so they're all pretty established. Some horse names to look out for as well, of course, fellow Castlefield, I mentioned earlier. Uh, Cheddington Hazy Tulana, we piloted by Christopher Burton. Meanwhile, on the Japanese team, Chakano JRA, rider of Egen Sato, certainly one to look out for as well. And Mike Kawaii with Goldwyn. So we are just waiting for our first rider into the ring now. Of course, the first the top two teams qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. That's what they're really going for today. The event of a tie for the overall scores across the two rounds. We'll have a jump off. The time allowed will be 81 seconds. So here we go. Here's our first rider into the ring. Hilary Scott for Australia with Oaks Milky Way. Combination who competed at the 2022 World Championships in Herning. First rider out for Australia at those championships. The Australian team that Hillary was on finished 20th. She's been jumping in plenty of top level competitions to prepare for this. Being the five star Grand Prix in Rotterdam, Hamburg this year. And prior to that was down in Mexico jumping in the top level competitions in San Miguel de Allende and Mexico City as well. So she heads off around the oh, over the first fence and now heading to this upright fence two left-handed curve to this red oxer at three and then they go round the outside of what will be fence 12 later on in the course. The water jump comes quite early on here at fence four safely over there strides down to a tall upright. These are a one meter 60 in height, these fences. 
And then this will be an interesting point, the rollback from five to six. See how tightly they can take that line before they then head down to the triple combination at seven. Triple bar in the middle of the arena comes now at fence eight. Need all the impulsion there before they make the left-handed curve to the upright at nine. And then again here, another technical line coming at the end of the course, which also really tests the fitness. Double at 10, one stride in there. Before heading there to the upright at 11. She's just making sure oof, that she had the controls. Or a bit of a long one, and she's just outside the time allowed. So it's going to be one for Hillary Scotts to kick things off for Australia. That time allowed, remember, is 81 seconds, so just 0.14 of a second over the time allowed. But of course, they pick up one time penalty for every second started over the time allowed. On then to New Zealand. Their first rider will be Daniel Meech. He rides Donjon Dashort. Daniel, of course, multiple Olympic rider already. Competed individually at the Tokyo 2021 Olympic Games. Athens in 2004, as well as back in Atlanta in 1996. It's also competed at the World Equestrian Games in 2018 in trial. Brings forward this 10 year old. competing in Valkensward for a couple of weeks. I uh, jumped just for one fence down in the two-star Grand Prix here. Fortunately, an early fault. Takes the inside line. carefully through the triple, but I think he would also need to be careful of the time. Just picks up the pace a little bit now. Just the last to go. He's made up plenty of time on this big striding horse, but just clips the front rail of that final fence there as well. It's 79.41 on the clock. But a couple of fences down, eight for Daniel Meech. fences down but it will be very interesting to see how these scores play out Hilary Scott our first rider in picking up that one time penalty and in these competitions where we have the one drop score but three scores counting that one time penalty could be crucial let's continue on then with our third team this is Xingjia Zhang who rides Severine Dubane Z this one is a 14 year old by Chippendale Z. Simjia now ready here to step up to this very top level. 
He is a young rider. 618th on the under 25 world rankings. Ah, oh, what a pity. Horse just looked at the water jump there a little bit, and so we have a hoof in. Of course, that incurs you for penalties as well. It's an experienced horse, though. This is one that was piloted by Louis Lambrecht of Belgium back in 2022 and by Edward Levy of France in 2021. Now here giving confidence to this young rider. element. So he's a long one to the last and just struggles a little bit to get to the back rail. And so it's going to be 12 in total for Zingjia Zhang. It's 16 in fact now. 16 at 4 down. Good for time because we have two rounds of jumping to come. Japan's Eiken Sato comes next then. Very experienced rider to kick things off for the Japanese team. The rider who competed at the Tokyo Olympic Games, finishing 25th. Also jumped in the 2008 Olympics. Two World Equestrian Games. And of course, also the World Championships last year in Herning. And the team that finished 16th there. He's keeping the pace up around the wider turn. Just making sure not to waste any time. Enormous jump over the water. But this horse has been a great partner for him recently jumped this horse at the uh, World Cup in Leipzig earlier this year and in Basel as well. Back end of last year did the World Cup legs in Madrid, Stuttgart and Helsinki. And a great shot to the last as well. What a fantastic horse to watch with that brilliant scope. But it's just going to be the four. For Eiken Sato and Chakano J.R.A. The 16-year-old established horse. Chaco Blue and Cannon on the breeding there. So, all of our first riders have now started. And we have the second riders to come. For Burton is next up, as of course we return back to Australia. Cheddington Hazy Tulana here is by Toulon. course known in the world of eventing as well. In fact competed at the 2016 Rio Olympics for eventing. But as several of these ride top riders do, they now also jump in the 
Short jumping competitions as well. On the ride of Edwina Tops Alexander, who is one of his teammates here, to come later on in this competition. accurately ridden through there. Oof, that is not what we'd have expected either from the rider or the horse, certainly not this combination, so we will incur a four. They're just really not locking on to came around the corner. Costly on the clock as well. What a pity. So it will be 17 in total for Christopher Burton and Cheddington Hazy at two liner. That refusal really just setting them back at the latter part of the course. And so plenty to pick up for time as well, unfortunately. So that's the 17 for Christopher Burton. We'll see if that is crossed out there. Team Australia will no doubt be hoping that that's the score that they can drop. We will wait to see what their third and fourth riders can do. First of all, Philip Steiner comes next for New Zealand. He rides Cassina Dior, who is by Diarado, out of a San Petrignano Cassini mare. New Zealand have that eight faulting round from Daniel Meech. Horse has a 32% clear round rate over fences at this height. He's of course being a meter 60. That rate goes up to 57%. When you look at the 1 meter 55 fences, so they're pretty established at this level. Had a good run of competitions. Jumping either clear or just having the one pole down. So a combination for the World Cup final earlier this year. Just saying woe, woe to the horse there. Just going to be a bit over the time here as well. So it will in fact be four on the score sheet. See Philip keeping well to the right there, coming through the double just to make sure he wasn't wasting any time. But unfortunately, I think with the horse being quite strong around the course, that can often just waste them a little bit of time. And so it's going to be a few to add for time. Four for New Zealand's Philip Steiner. The eight is what they're hoping to be the drop score. For China then, it's uh, Yushen Chen now. Who rides Gaga e Dogastan? Of 
was, of course, known at the very top level with Jordi van Massenhove. Yu Chen taking on the ride earlier this year, just a couple of months ago, and has jumped in a couple of Grand Prix, a two star Grand Prix in Drammen. They jumped clear to get into the jump off and finish ninth, and then jumped in a three star Grand Prix, also in Drammen. June just gets a little quick and a little flat over that upright. Those designers here are Peter Schumacher and Frank van Humbeek. And they've used quite a lot of these tall uprights that can really catch the riders out. Really getting a little long here down this line as well. But this is an experienced horse. just takes the front rail of the last fence as well and one for time so 13 will be the total score for China's Yu Chen Chen a 13 and a 16 means that even if their third and fourth riders jump clear, China will finish on a minimum score of 13. Next horse that we see in the ring here then is Stakatisa PS, who is by Stakatol, out of a Chaco Blue Met, ridden by Yuko Itakura for Japan. Japan just had that four faulting round from Eiken Sato. This horse is less experienced over the meter 60 fences. Just jumped two rounds at this height. More experienced to the meter 50 level where they have a 44% clear round rate. They are yet to jump a clear over meter 55 or meter 60 fences. straight then down this final line keeps the accuracy and keeps the tightest line oh what a fantastic round Yuko Itakura gives us our first clear of the competition for Japan of course we had Hilary Scott jumping clear but picking up a time penalty and now Yuko Itakura gives us the first clear Japan leading the way then, as it stands, but quite a way to go yet. We go back now to Australia. Their third rider will be Lauren Balcom, rides of Erdini, Z. from Hilary Scott and the 17 from Christopher Burton. They could do with a good round here. Keeping that score as low as possible. Lauren's had quite a run of competing over in America. She comes here from competing in Ocala recently. 
great show there. Oh, never dropping more than one pole. And a really nice uh, double clear to win a three-star Grand Prix. This horse has some very impressive statistics. 67% clear round rate over meter 60 fences. Same rate at a meter 55 and 66% at 150. 78% over meter 45 fences. Very, very consistent for this 12 year old. Steadying down to the double, we thought this could be a tricky point in the course for many of these riders, and I think it's certainly catching a few out already. She's good for the time as well. 7703, she is pretty quick and gives us our second clear. Just what the Australian team needed, and they have a very consistent combination to come in Edwina Tops Alexander and fellow Castlefield. There's the score then. A one and a clear for Australia as it stands. New Zealand's Richard Gardner comes next with Callisto. Fifteen year old by Coleman. New Zealand with an eight and a four you would find a clear very, very valuable at this stage. Quite a few top 10 placings this year already. Uh, sixth, in fact, in the two star Grand Prix here last week. Oh, what a pity, just we've slipped over the fence. Didn't quite make the height. This horse is particularly experienced to uh, meter 45 level. That's where their statistics are most impressive. At this height, their average faults are 6.41. Say that Callisto is just getting used to the level and getting more established over the bigger fences. Eclipse the last as well, so the time is good 77.73. But it's going to be a few down here. There goes the middle element of the triple combination. So, for Richard, it's 12. New Zealand looking like they will be in a tricky position. Remember, what they want is one of these Olympic qualifying spots. Two slots up for grabs. Top two teams will be going forward to those Olympic Games in Paris next year. China's Ella Yujing Wang comes next. With this 11 year old Hosselind. Again, Ella was a rider at the World Championships last year individually as well as in the uh, Asian Games in 2019 in Pattaya. 
where she placed fourth individually. That was with the horse Quidamia. So Lind is the horse that came from Luis Felipe Gonzalez, the Azevedo. She's got a good pace up here already. China with the 16 and the 13, so they're trading a little bit in this competition. Pretty established horse, though, and one that Ella has been really developing a partnership with over the last couple of seasons. Horse has only jumped three rounds at this height before, and one clear. She's going to just come out of the triple combination there. I'm going to wait for the fence to be rebuilt. Just got a little strong there, and I think she just felt that she didn't quite make it to B and C in the way that she wanted. So we'll have another try there. Ella Yunjing Wang. Just going to balance the horse here. We're on a score of 12 now. Looking to reapproach to the triple combination. In fact, I think Ella is opting to retire now here. Puts the pressure on the final rider for the Chinese team. That will be Yao Feng Li. They must have three scores counting. So with Ella retiring there, Yao Feng Li really must have, well, must have a counting score crucially. China now will be on a minimum score from round one of 29. <laughs> Here comes Mike Kawai then for Japan with Goldwyn. Mike Kawai, of course, a reserve rider for the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Mike sits 15th at the moment in the FEI jumping under 25 rankings. Got a couple of excellent horses in his string at the very top level. And Goldwyn very much one of the very established ones. Saxo Durka, another of his top rides. Goldwyn has a 35% clear round rate over these top level fences, these need to 60 fences, but it's pretty consistent all the way down the board. Oh, what a pity. Mike was just keen to keep an eye on the time there, and so has one pole clipped. Again, triple combination is causing problems here. Mike Kawai sits on the 16. Mike has spent quite a bit of time at the Longines Tops International Arena training with Jan Tops, who still trains him now. Mike took Goldwyn down to Monaco on the Longines Global Champions Tour, as well as to Paris and Stockholm. Had a top six finish in both Stockholm and Monaco. Safely through the second time. Distance is looking a little long in there for Goldwyn. But as I say, an experienced horse and an experienced.
experienced rider. Going to be very costly on the clock as well. However, this could be the drop score for the Japanese team. We have a couple of good rounds already on the score sheet for them. Sees a good stride to the last, but the clock stops at 93.49, and so that's 33 for Mike Kawai. That's an unusual performance for this combination. Come to see Goldwyn perform so well over the years. Whether it be on the Engine Global Champions Tour or in the various five star Grand Prix. Birdies jumped in. Not quite the day for them yet, but of course we have another round to come. Going on then to the final rider for Australia. This is Edwina Tops Alexander with fellow Castlefield. Fellow Castlefield who is by Jetem Flamenco. This is a really interesting combination. Edwina jumped clear in three consecutive five-star Grand Prix, uh, those all being on the Longines Global Champions Tour. Pretty amazingly consistent. But fellow Castlefield would not be the easiest of horses, as um, Edwina herself has said. It's a very sensitive sort of horse. Really has to be managed very carefully, but absolutely has the potential to be a real star. Well, already has been a real star with consistency of clear rounds at the very top flight. This horse has a 38% clear round rate. I'm going to add to it today, sadly. You can see Edwina really has to sit so quietly with fellow Castlefield and just allow him to come to the fences. And a little over the time as well. He's got the big stride and I think she was just taking a couple of slightly wider lines just to be sure of the approach. But that will incur some time penalties as well. So we have a few time penalties for Australia. Hilary Scott and two for Edwina Tops Alexander. A score of six means that the drop score will indeed be that of Christopher Burton and their total score is seven from round one. Three scores count. Final rider for New Zealand will be Tom Tava Priva who rides five afresh Popeye. combination is quite established to the 160 level. They're 22% of the time at clear. They've jumped 18 rounds at 160 level. Oh, has a now we're on the four. This is a horse that can be pretty quick. They had a win in a speed class in Hamburg in May. It's just, you can see the way that he's holding Fibre Fresh Popeye in there. He absolutely has got the potential to go extremely quickly. But 
accuracy is what's called for around this particular course. Final fence as well, uh, but they are inside the time. Only three down here. Red Oxer there is causing quite a few problems. So we have a few places around the course that are causing some problems. The double combination coming down here is proving quite tricky and a real test of stamina and fitness towards the end of the course. Triple combination also causing the problems, but 12 of the total for New Zealand's Tom, Tava, Priva. And so let's take that as the drop score. The total will be 24 for New Zealand, so they are some way at this stage behind Australia. Remember, it's the top two that will be getting the Olympic qualifying spots. Just two riders still to come in this first round of competition, and the next will be Yao Feng Li with Jericho Duers Hagen. was competed by uh, Thibaut and Patrick Spitz back in 2019, but it's owned by Yao Feng Li. Working on the four, really using the body well to try to gain some balance here. This horse has only jumped two rounds at a metre 60 so far. None at 155. We need to go to meter 40 level to see the clears. Some good pace up here, just needs to be quite careful around the turns back to these uprights with that kind of pace. Yeah, just a little over the time, so it will just be one for time and four for jumping for Yao Feng Li of China. Five is the score. Of course, we have that. The, their third rider, Ella Yujing Wang, retired. So that's the drop score, if you like. So the total's 34 for Team China. Heads them into third place. They will go in reverse order of placings from round one when they come into round two. All teams return. At the moment, Australia are in pole position with their seven. But we just have one right to come. It's Taizo Sugitani. Who rides Quincy. And bringing out arguably them one of their most experienced riders for their anchor spot. Sadly, the first fence goes though for Taizo Sukitani. He is a six time Olympian, the first of those being in 1996 in Atlanta, and the most recent being in Rio 2016. Also competed at six World Equestrian Games, two World Cup Finals, two Asian Games, and one World Championships, that being last year. What a pity to have that first fence. Japan on the uh, on four, a clear, and a 33. If they 
can keep on the four here, they'll be in second place going into round two. Really good for time, 76.57, and just that one fence down. So Japan will finish on eight for round one, and that will mean that they'll be in second place. So Australia will be last to go. In round two, China will be first in. They'll be followed by New Zealand, then Japan. And then, as I say, Australia in pole position. Second place at the moment for Japan, but just one penalty separates them from Team Australia. Here are the standings. It's seven for Australia, eight for Japan. These are their scores. Their best three riders, 24 for New Zealand and 34 for Team China. So as it stands, it looks like Australia and Japan are some way in front. And of course, it's those top two spots that we're looking at there, the qualifying places for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. We'll be taking a short break now. Round two is anticipated to start around half an hour after the end of the first round. We'll keep you updated on those times. Arena will just be re-leveled, just maintaining this perfect footing. And round two, we will be back in half an hour's time for these four teams to battle it out for those two Olympic slots.
Well, we're just moments away from the second round of this Olympic qualifier for Group G taking place at Tops International Arena, the Longines Tops International Arena in Falkenswad in the Netherlands. Here's the start list for round two. Team China will go in first. They finished round one with 34 penalties. They'll then be followed by Team New Zealand, who come forward with 24. Then Japan will be the third team heading into the ring. And Australia will be in pole position with their seven penalties. They're leading the way after round two. Here's the individual start list for you. Of course, we have one rider per team. Christopher Burton there will be the second rider in for Australia. Audrina Tops Alexander will be the last rider to go. They're going in the same order in their teams. Edwina was the final rider for Team Australia, and Australia are the final team to go. So, the yeah, multiple Olympian will be rounding things out in round two for us. But what a competition we had in round one. Some fantastic rounds, only two clears. One of those went to Japan's Yuko Itakura, and the other went to... Uh, Lauren Balcom of Australia. Hilary Scott jumped clear but picked up the one time penalty. China then are the team heading in first as we're going in reverse order of placings from round one. Their first rider in is Xingjia Zhang with Severine Dubanet Z. This combination picked up 16 penalties in round one. And this mare is a 14 year old by Chippendale, owned by Yonggui Zhang. They will no doubt be hoping for an improved score in round two. China's team total 34 from round one. That's also contributed to by a retiring from Ella Yunjing Wang. This combination have a 17% clear round rate over fences of a metre 60. They've only competed at this level in six rounds prior to today. This triple combination has been causing quite some problems. Gets deep into the first and does extremely well to get through the B and C element there. Big shot to that green oxer. Does well again to balance for those delicate uprights. Very much up to height at a meter 60. This line has been causing some issues as well. Of course, to man's accuracy at the latter part of the course. Test stamina as well to keep that control, energy, the accuracy, as I say. But it's going to be two down for Xingjia Zhang of China. Eight. And lovely to see the improvement in the score from round one to round two. It's going to.
Continuing on then we go now to Japan. The Japanese team alongside the Australian team were in some good positions. Eight was their total from round two. Just one penalty behind the Australian team. Egan Sato just dropped the one pole in round one. He's, of course, an extremely experienced rider. With Chacano JRA now, this 16 year old. Sadly, that's the middle part of the triple combination down the triple really caused plenty of problems in round one. 33% is this combination's clear round rate over meter 60 fences. But they are very experienced to this level. 39 rounds jumped at the very top level. Average faults um, at this level is 4.31. Maybe a little over that today. But the time's looking good. Great shot to the last. 76.9 on the clock. But it is going to be two fences down for Egan Sato. Slight change to the score of four from round one. So just one team left to start in round two. We'll go back to Hilary Scott. She, of course, jumped clear in round one, but just picked up the one time penalty. So her score was one with Oaks Milky Way. Another 16-year-old. This one by Clearway out of a Jalisco B Bear. And this one is owned by Alice Cameron. Hillary, I have no doubt, will have a keen eye on the clock for round two. Looking to keep Australia at the top of the tree. 16% clear round rate over fences of this height. And 44 rounds jumped at the level for this horse. through the triple, working on the four here. This combination's most recent Nations Cup was in Rotterdam. He's a long one to the last as well. They are inside the time. Unfortunately, though, it's going to be two down for Hilary Scott. A little bit of a different story then to round one for her. Quite incredibly, we did only have the two clears in round one. And we're yet to find one in round two. So we've had all of our first riders already in round two here. All of the first riders for each team, of course, four riders per team. The best three scores count. One drop score per team per round, and it doesn't have to be from the same rider. It's just the worst score, if you like. Back to China, then. The team finishing round one in fourth place. This is Yu Chen Chen with Gaga Yi Dogastan.
good to the water. Yichen Chen with this experienced horse from the ride of Geordie Van Massenhove. Horses jump 16 rounds at this height and jumps clear a quarter of the time over a metre 60 fences. In round one, they picked up 13 penalties and we're going well here so far. And I do have a line with the 34th in round one. This has been a really great round so far. Oh, the time's tight too now. Seven will be the total. Three added for time for Yu Chen Chen. And of course, the fourth jumping for that penultimate fence. Will be a score of seven. And some great improvements on the scores from round one to round two for our first two Chinese riders. Still an eight and a seven means that their minimum score could, for this whole competition could be 41. Next up then we go back to New Zealand. This is Philip Steiner with Cassina Dior. This is an 11 year old mare by Diorado. Philip just dropped one pole in round one, was the best score from, for the New Zealand team in round one. Casino Dior going quite strong. They competed in the Longines Grand Prix of Switzerland last month. Okay, up 11. They would have been jumping around Europe in some impressive competitions. We're still looking for a clear, which would be very valuable. Now, let's be careful through this double. Oh, forwarding. Does very well to regain the balance for the penultimate fence there. Made it all over the time as well. Uh, five will be the score for Philip Steiner, but that was very well managed to keep things together for the latter part of the course. What a pity. Double combination causing plenty of problems. So, New Zealand's minimum score now will be 29. Keeps them ahead of China. Top two is really what we're looking at. Back to Japan then, to Yuko Itakura. Yuko sealed one of the only two clears in round one, a double clear here in the context of this competition especially would be very, very impressive indeed. The horse is Stakatisa PS. It's by Stakatol out of a Chaco Blue Mare. Very impressively bred. performance all the more impressive is the fact that prior to today this horse had only jumped two 
rounds over fences of a metre 60, two at one metre 55 and nine at a metre 50. The horse is really more established to the metre 45 level but very much stepping up to the occasion here today. Great to the last though and the time is good as well. What a pity to just have those two down in this final line. Arguably you may take that as a sign of a little bit of an experience at the level for this mare. Because round one was fantastic and just she just may have been dropping a little bit of stamina down that final line. Final line of round two certainly an impressive performance for the combination back to Australia then our leading team from round one with the eventing icon Christopher Burton Christopher rides the former Edwina Tops Alexander ride Cheddington Hazy Julana Again, not the most experienced horse at the uh, very top level. In fact, the mare is most experienced to about 145, 150 level. Only three rounds jumped at a metre 55, and none at a metre 60 prior to today. Their score was 17 in round one. Horse jumped really well with Edwina Tops Alexander back in 2021. He had a, a four star win in uh, Riyadh and a podium finish in a five star jump off class as well, also in Riyadh. Perfectly judged on the time and just the one fence down for Christopher Burton. So that most certainly is a better result than in round one. Takes the score of 17 from round one. That was the drop score. Now we just have a score of four. That means that Australia stay in the lead. If their third and fourth riders could jump clear, they'd finish on a score of 11. ask to uh, have another couple of clears as we have seen but were they to do so that would keep them at the top of the pack third riders are now up and for china it's ella yunjing wang with hosselind Fortunately, this combination retired in round one. The problem for them came in the triple combination, so just a place to watch out for. This horse has jumped three rounds. Oh. And certainly doesn't. Jumped clear in one of those. Not being in Villamora a couple of years ago. 
nicely through the triple combination. That's really nice to see them coming through there confidently. Takes the circle here. Oh, what a pity. It sadly is not the day for Ella Yunjing Wang, and unfortunately, she's parted ways with Hosselind. We will just confirm that they are up on their feet, but unfortunately, that's an elimination. That's really not what she would have wanted. Such a shame as we saw them successfully through the triple combination this time around. Most recently, she has been dropping the horse right down back to the uh, meter 30, meter 35, meter 40 classes. Here with this much bigger competition, just feeling the pressure. China then will count at least 15 from round two. Should give them 49 overall. Remember, we're looking for the top two teams to qualify for those slots for the Paris 2024 Olympics. What a competition we have here, this Group G qualifier. We'll be going back to New Zealand now then, to Richard Gardner with Callisto. Combination dropped three poles in round one. A 15 year old horse looking at 6% uh, clear rate for metre 60 fences. Oh, very good at the 140, 145 level. In fact, this horse has a 92% clear round rate over fences of a metre 40. But interesting to see how they then tackle this course. The red oxa there is still causing plenty of problems as well. They're just really running down the, the ring to that hoof in the water, sadly, as well. Gives him another four. Okay, this is a pretty strong horse. He's just battling a little to get the horse back with him and listening before the fences. as well through the triple. New Zealand also with a couple of costly scores for round two. Just a rattle at the last. Good for time, though. It's going to be two down for uh, Richard Gardner. Score then for New Zealand. Overall is 37 now to incorporate the 12, uh, the 13, excuse my maths, for round two. Kawaii comes now with Goldwyn. 
like a regular on the Longines Global Champions Tour. Goldwyn, one of his very top rides, had quite the uncharacteristic round in round one, picking up 33 penalties. He has a clear rate of 35% at this level with Goldwyn. 41% at 155, 67% at a metre 50. Goes up to 74% over fences of a metre 45. So that just gives you an idea of how consistent Goldwyn has been up and down the levels. The element comes down in the triple. Like, of course, the reserve rider for the Tokyo Olympic Games. Trying to help Japan to a slot in the 2024 running. He's a bit over the time as well. It's going to be 10 for Mike Kawai and Goldwyn. That means that Japan will add a minimum of 18 in round two and that coupled with their eight from round one take them on to 26. Lauren Balcom now was one of the only two riders to jump clear in round one. Verdini Dirtveld Z is her ride. The default. So it won't be a double clear. No double clears possible in this competition now, interestingly. This horse has jumped six rounds at meter 60 level prior to today. Uh, jumped clear in four of those. Two of which, in fact, were uh, double clears. Competition is hotting up between those at the top. Lauren Balcom comes to the last and keeps it up and keeps inside the time as well. It's four. So that means that if Edwina Tops Alexander is able to jump clear, Australia would count an extra extra eight and that would give them a total score of 15 but that is dependent on a clear from Edwina Tops Alexandra we know fellow Castlefield can jump the clears were she to have a fence down of course that score goes up and up Mm -hmm. 
And I think with that performance, Lauren Balcom's just secured the top spot for Australia. But let's wait for the final riders. Back to China then, to Yafeng Li with Jericho Diverse Hagen. This combination picked up five in round one. This has to be a counting score for China with the elimination of Ella Yunjing Wang. They've got 15 from round two already. Now another four. Some 19 as the... Oh. As the score ticking up for the team for round two. To add to the 34 from round one. Tricky day for the Chinese team here. We'll rattle at the penultimate fence. Keeps it up. Time's tricky here. And the last fence goes as well. So it's two for time, eight for jumping. For Yao Feng Li, it gives a total of ten. It's going to be quite a big score once again for the Chinese team. And it's 25 for round two for them. Gives them a total score of 59 across the two rounds of jumping. Our final rider for New Zealand is Tom Tarver Priva with Fibre Fresh Popeye. Sources by Cardento. And is pretty experienced at the level. It's jumped 18 rounds at this height. Sources average faults at this height is 5.33. Picked up 12 in round one. A clear would have New Zealand on 13 from round two, which would give them uh, 37. All in all. Is it very close to fence one? Oof. Real hesitation there from Fiber Fresh Popeye. It must look like we were going to have a run out there. I think Tom Tava Priva did particularly well to keep that going. Time. It's been pretty influential here. One for time then, it's nine for Tom and Fiber Fresh Popeye. Going to be a total of 22 because we'll drop the score of Daniel Meach in round two. That was a score of 16. The counting scores for New Zealand will be five from Philip Steiner, eight from Richard Gardner, and now the nine from Tom Tava Priva. Gives them 22 in round two. So a total of 46. Keeps them ahead of China. So they're in third place for now, with two teams left to complete. However, things are looking good for Australia because even if their final rider is eliminated. Their maximum score now can be 23, which would keep them ahead of China and New Zealand.
they would be guaranteed an Olympic qualifying spot. Taizo Sugitani, though, now is the final rider for Japan. This combination just dropped one pole in round one. Again, things are looking good for Japan, even if Taizo is not able to complete, they'll count three scores. And adding to their first round total, it will give them 34. And they would seal an Olympic spot. You could see this 12 year old gelding. Nine percent clear round rate over meter sixty fences. Now on the eight. Oh, good rattle at the second last. Very good for time. It's eight for Taizo Sugitani. And so the drop score for the Japanese team will be the ten of Mike Kawaii. Their score will be 24 in round two, three eight vaulting rounds, adding that to the round one total of eight. will give them 32, and it puts them into second place, meaning that Japan have sealed their slot in the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. The score of 32 gets them second. And as Edwina Tops Alexander comes into the ring, she knows that her team have secured the winning spot in this competition already. And again, have secured the Olympic qualifying spot. Edwina Tops Alexander, though, the final rider in with fellow Castlefield. This very impressive but quite tricky gelding. Three clear rounds jumped in consecutive five-star Grand Prix earlier this year. A unique horse, not the easiest to ride, but expertly partnered by Edwina. Sources uh, clear round rate. This level is 38%. Just have a little bit of a trailing hind leg there over the upright. Two fences left for Edwina. Comes now to the last. She's fine for time. Absolutely flies the last. She does pick up the eight penalties, but no matter because the winning slot and the Olympic slot is secured for Team Australia. Takes the turning line out of the triple combination just to make sure she doesn't waste a second. Of course, that rider who won a Grand Prix uh, in Madrid earlier this year by being the only clear. So, we'll drop one of the scores of eight. We'll count the seven and the 16 to give a score of 23 for Team Australia. And they are your winners. And they seal the slot for 
the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. The win goes to Australia and the first of those qualification spots. Japan take second with 32 and take the second qualifying spot. New Zealand finish in third with their 46 penalties and China finish in fourth with 59. So no qualification for New Zealand or China, but Australia and Japan have the day that they needed, get the results they needed. No jump off necessary here today. And we will see Australia and Japan in Paris next year at the Olympic Games. Fantastic performances for Australia for the win from Hilary Scott, Christopher Burton, Lauren Balcom and Edwina Tops Alexander. And then the Japanese team securing that slot was of course Eiken Sato, Yoko Itakura, Mike Kawai and Taizo Sugitani. Those eight riders securing the two top spots for their teams. Well, fantastic comp competition under the sun in Valkenswaard in the Longines Tops International Arena. But as you can see, the arena party are just sorting out the arena and just taking these fences down, preparing for the prize giving for this competition. Prize giving will be taking place in just a few moments time. With Australia taking the top spot, Japan taking second and New Zealand taking the third spot. plenty other Olympic qualifying competitions to come, which will be live on Flip My Holes. This one of course for Group G. If you missed any of the action, you can also re-watch this competition in the Clip My Horse archive. But we will be bringing you the prize giving following this competition, so do stay with us. I will leave you with that prize giving and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. A fantastic win for Australia and a second place for Japan and the crucial thing is that those are the two teams taking the qualifying spots to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games.
So, there we are. Thank you, Mr. Van Beek. Thank you, our ringmaster. Welcome to Mr. Jack Huang, Vice President of the FBI. And, well, let's start. What a The winners of today, Paris 2024. We come, there they are, a team of Australia. Top hand. Such a memorable day, the 18th of the 18th of July. Please all rise, we're about to listen to the national anthem of Australia. What a team! Hilary Scott, Christopher Burton, Lauren Balcom and Edwina Tops Alexander. Well, the trophies... The trophies uh, hand over by Mr. Jack C. Huang on behalf of the FEI. The trophies and of course the pictures. Paris 2024 for the Australian team. What a great result. And a very happy chef de équipe, Mr. Todd Hind. There, the congratulations. And of course, the photos, the photographs. Total result uh, for the Australian team, 23 falls. The number one in this competition. And on Julie, the 18th. So, and there, congratulations for Christopher Burton. So, lots of photos for the Ingenome. Yeah. And again, big hands for the team of Australia! What a result here in the Longines Tops International Arena. The Australian team. Okay. Then we go to the team who ended up as the number two with 32 points, a team of Japan! And the chef de équipe, Mr. Rob Ahrens. Congratulated uh, by Mr. Jack Huang. 32 points uh, in total uh, of the first and the second round. That was enough for the number two and the ticket. Uh, Paris 2024, here we come. The congratulations. Great team. And uh, congratulations and a beautiful trophy for the riders. The number two, Japan. The more than happy chef de équipe, Mr. Rob Ehrens. Beautiful. Once again, big hand for the team of Japan.
And today they ended up as the number three with a total amount of 46 points. Uh, please, a big hand for the team of New Zealand. Uh, with the chef de keeper Oliver Edgecombe. The number three here today. So. The four riders of New Zealand, as I said, 46 points in total. And the number three here in the, today's qualification. So, one group's photo. Yes, of course, including the chef d'équipe, including Mr. Jack Huang. Just a moment and now you've got the opportunity. Yeah, great. It will be great pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big hand for the team of New Zealand. Well, I ask the chef de keeps to step forward. And uh, I think we have some music over here. So, there will be one lap of honor. We start the music and then the lap of honor is yours. First, the team of Australia. And the second team, team of Japan. And third team, a team of New Zealand. And once again, the big hand for Henry Scott, Christopher Burton, Lauren Balcon, and Edwina Tops Alexander. And of course, they have here again the team Australia on their way to Paris 2024. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jack Kuan, for being uh, our guest here and here in the prize giving. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks that we could welcome you here as our guest uh, here in this uh, beautiful Longines Tops International Arena. And, um, well, there's much more show jumping uh, over here and not the next weekend, but afterwards, the weekend, uh, you're more than welcome for more show jumping here at the Longines Tops International Arena. <laughs> 